me just okay. Okay, one second. Whenever you're ready. The uh, elevator installation and repair and maintenance work board will now come to order. Uh, can everyone for the record state their name? Uh, I'm a contractor record. Excuse me, contractor member. And then we have Peter as another member. Did you want to introduce yourself, Peter? You have him muted? No, I don't. No, he's muted on his own. So, um, all right, let, let me just, before we go any further, we do have some people um, trying to join us here. So give me just one second. Let me get, move them over. We have Pam Brown. So maybe we can hold off on the introductions for a second. Peter has his hand raised. That means that, that there's something wrong with his audio. Yeah, yeah, I'll check with him in a second. Um, because he's not muted on my end. Peter, can you hear us? Check my emails. Nothing in the emails. Um, okay. Let's do this. Maybe Peter can can work on what the issue may be. Um, or I can help him in a few minutes. Did you want to? Did you want me to? It looks like everybody else that's here. It's all DCP staff. Did you want me to introduce everybody? Um, First, yes. And then get back to Peter. Okay. Yes. Okay, so we have, I'm going to go in order here. We have Ryan Burns, and he is a um, new staff, a fairly new staff attorney for DCP. Um, but everybody wants to say hello to Ryan. He's what was his, what was, oh, Ryan Burns. Hello. Ryan Burns, yeah. Hi. Hi everybody. Yep, yeah, I'm here. I work with with Paul Grabowski, who you know well, and with uh, Ben Paholke. Um, uh, I'm mostly just going to be here to listen and educate myself. But uh, it's a pleasure to meet you all. Mercy okay. to meet you. Um, let, let me just stick with the the legal staff. We have Ben, and I don't know how to say your last name, Ben. <laughs> You're on mute. There you go. We can't hear you. Okay, how about Hello? now? Oh, there you go. There go. Trying a new pair of headphones, and uh, it, I should have done it before I started, before I got on the clock, but here I am with the headphones. Um, good morning, everybody. I'm Ben. Uh, my last name is pronounced Paholke. Uh, don't worry about getting it wrong. Everyone does. It's an excellent deterrent against telemarketers. Okay, and you're a, you're a staff attorney, right? Yes, yes I am. I'm, uh, I'm the newest staff attorney. I've been here a couple of months. Um, okay. Yeah. All right, welcome. And then we have- Thank you, Very happy to Sorry. be here. Sorry about that. We have Shamika, she's a uh, paralegal. I'm new to DCP, correct? Yes, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, I've been with DCP for about a month now, so I am also listening listening in like Ryan, um, getting used to how this board works and functions. Okay, and then we have uh, Paul Grabowski. I'm not sure if you've met him or not. He's a, a, another attorney for DCP. Yeah, so I'm the staff attorney too. I think we've, I've been to one board meeting um, and I am the staff attorney that is assigned to this board. Um, so yeah, I'll be... As I said before, I'll be working with the, uh, the board going forward on the enforcement actions. Um, and uh, yeah, always feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Thanks. Okay, and then let's see, we do have here, um, you want, we do have Janita and Pam in the meeting. You want, you want to know who they are though, hello. <laughs> Good morning. Um, and we have Howard Osden, um, he, as you know, he's one of the DCP staff that works with our boards and our applications and all that. He, he sometimes joins us to observe. Um, and last but not least, we have a new um, staff member. Her name is Verinda Birdsong. Hopefully I'm saying the name correctly, Verinda. You are. 
and she's a license and application analyst and she will um, be working more with the boards eventually but right now she's just observing um did you want to introduce yourself Miranda, or did you no you've done a fine job okay all right so welcome to verinda so, so right now she's just observing and let's see what i'm going to do is peter has rejoined us so give me one second and we'll see if we can hear him we also have somebody on the phone good morning peter can you hear us now i sure hope so how are you karen good good thanks all right so we're Sorry, all set it. We I called into the phone for the audio, but that didn't work. So I tried to shut everything down and restart. So, yep. Thank you. Okay. All right. Hello, Pete. How are you? Hi, John. Good, Chair, Mr. Chairman. How are you? Good. I'm, I'm going to try not to be long winded. I got quite a few things today. Uh, Let me just give, give me one second, please. Let me just um, see who this is on the phone. Um, the number is 203 725 1982. Maybe one of the board members. Can you hear us? Oh. Uh, Okay. Uh, this is Paul Farnsworth. I needed to press star six to unmute. I have done that and I hope you can hear me now. Yes, we can hear you. You're all set. Okay, so we have Paul with us. And I think that's it. If you want to move forward, Chairman. Hello, Mr. Farnsworth. How are you? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you. Good to see you. Okay, uh, we'll review the minutes of the previous meeting. And when you're ready for a motion uh, to amend or uh, approve, uh, just someone spot it out. Motion to accept. Second. Maybe they're still reviewing the documentation. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I'll have to abstain. I was uh, not present at the last meeting. Peter Kalusi. Okay. I believe Paul Farnsworth attended that meeting and myself. I don't have um, me. Uh, I second the motion, Mr. Chairman, Paul Farnsworth, uh, speaking. Okay, any questions? All in favor? Say aye. 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 Any abstentions? Yes, one, aye. One abstention? Okay, thank you. Okay, agenda, residential steer lift technician subcommittee. So I'm gonna try to be brief, but bear with me. Um, I got to give a little history here of this. Uh, 2016, 
a bill was passed to create a technician's license for a stairway chairlift. Uh, the board basically opposed the bill due to the fact that the chairlifts are already covered in our R5R6 work. Uh, this was a residential uh, technician's license for residential only. Okay, uh, we opposed the bill because it's already under the accessibility journey person's license. The bill passed. Um, the board, and I think they did a fantastic job, a really good job, um, drafted uh, the regs and training requirements. And the um, basically what I have here is I sent you, uh, uh, Karen sent out the email. Basically, it shows the uh, what we suggested, okay? With, we came up with a reg, a contractor reg, and then the journey person technician reg, uh, like uh, to be consistent with all the other regs and statute for a limited license. We also added uh, some qualifications, blueprint reading, electrical, electrical blueprint readings, electrical theory, DC, AC, and installation maintenance repair training that we should felt we should have in there. We drafted the limited <coughs> contractor, the journey person's license, uh, and then we added a definition, uh, residential stair lift equipment refers to inclined stairway chair lifts. Um, so I think we did a pretty good job with it also under, and we called it an R12, the, the requ requirements to qualify for this license examination shall be the completion of a registered apprenticeship program. So we wrote down some criteria that we felt should be in there. It was only a draft. And obviously they would take, you know, hopefully would, would have took that information and, and anyone who wanted this license would submit something to DOL, an apprenticeship program, that's what you do. One of our board members has one in there. Not, you know, all the board members that are in the trade have them registered in there. And uh, so that was the safeguard, right? Go to DOL, register the program. And we gave them uh, an outline of what we felt, 2,000 hours of on-the-job training. Uh, that's basically one year, uh, 144 hours related instruction. So we have what we submitted and felt that as a start, should be the uh, curriculum, the on-the-job training, and then obviously it would be a registered program. It would have been nice and neat. The department, I also sent another document. So we have what we submitted. And again, the board did a fantastic job. You know, uh, we're not attorneys, but I think we wrote everything uh, precise and consistent with all the other regs for a limited license. Uh, the second correspondence I sent the board members was actually what's required now that DCP uh, requires. Um, I know I, I don't have to read it to you, but basically, uh, I asking with the permission of the board if they want to go this way is look at the uh, residential stair chairlift trainee um, experience that DCP is requiring and then look at what the board drafted and then by, you know, it, it should be pretty easy for some of us. Um, look at that and by the next meeting, just have the suggestions uh, and we'll suggest it to DCP, we'll write it up uh, and that'll be that. That way you can, you know, absorb it a little bit. You'll look at what the, what the requirements are now and what we suggested um, and then if the, you know, the board members can look at that and add or subtract, they may feel it's fine with what DCP has uh, required. But, you know, I think we have it in front of us. You can print it out. You can absorb it. You can think a little bit. And then um, by next meeting, we should have, each of us should have a suggestion. And uh, we'll just put it down in writing and send it off to DCP and, you know, ask them to revamp the requirements if we feel it's necessary. Is that okay with the board? Yeah, that sounds fine. 
I agree. Agree. Is that, do you think that's okay instead of trying to push everyone now? Oh, Paul and the other members, I just want to make sure you're okay with Hi, this is Ryan. Yeah, we would definitely appreciate some time to digest that and, and bounce it around. But we, so we uh, appreciate that opportunity. Yeah. And then actually, Ryan, you can see what we were getting at being consistent with all the regs. It's like a limited license. They carved it out. Um, basically, my opinion is, and I think some of the board members, when you start to carve out a, a, a limited license that we have already, that you're just reducing the requirements and qualifications and you are carrying disabled people, right? It's, very, you know, we're dealing with public we're transportation. We're, we're, everyone is in the hands, you know, when they get this license, right? Children, elderly, uh, it's pretty, pretty difficult. Uh, it's a unique board. You know, every day there's elevators, escalators, uh, limited license with the platform lifts. And, you know, if something goes wrong, uh, you can create a big problem fast for somebody. Understood. Uh, Thank you very much. want also to research accidents and deaths in other state, because I feel this board over 50 years, how long it's been, it's all, it, it's all been kind of going along with the same mentality of protecting the public, mm -hmm. uh, workers, and uh, we don't have those deaths here. We don't have those accidents. And uh, that, this is why, because the board's before us and we just continued in what they were doing. Understood. I would appreciate it. It was a document. I also sent a document. Uh, we were looking for, um, in, in the new, some people new here with DCP, uh, probably not aware of this, but we were trying to uh, have a special meeting. It was canceled. Uh, the letter that I sent you, you could read, is kind of self explanatory, and I'll sum it up. Basically, what they're saying is they have the right, because in the statute, it says board or commissioner now, to approve application. They canceled our special meeting. Um, and basically, you're telling us that they can approve the application. They reviewed it, and that was final. If we wanted to deal with it further, I could go to our uh, counsel, which is the attorney general's office. <coughs> And that's why they canceled the meeting. They felt the law is clear that they can approve it and we cannot look at an application that was approved and revoke it. Um, so the department's approval applications are not revocable by the board. So that was their letter to me. I did not go to the attorney general, which we have used before for our counsel, unless the board orders me to do that. Um, also, can everyone hear me? Yes, uh, we can hear you. Yes. Are the board board members following me? Yes, we are. Okay. Yes. Also, there's one comment in here. As you know, after the United States Supreme Court decision in North Carolina, Department entered into memorandum of understanding with five boards related to the review of license applications that do not readily meet standards. So uh, I dealt with the boards heavily on this when this happened. Not sign that MOU. We had an agreement because of the dangers of our trade. And uh, you know, I think quoted 30, uh, I don't know how many deaths and accidents in the report that we gave. Um, we had our own agreement and basically what our agreement said was an unlimited license, an applicant was a state of Connecticut apprenticeship completion letter and notarized statements from unlimited contractor with dates and duties, which we always did over all these years. And a limited journey person as an application to state of Connecticut apprenticeship letter in notarized statements from the contract dates and duties of including not less than two years. Anyone who did not have the, that criteria, the board would review the application. Now they did honor that. I think you can correct me if I'm wrong, all the way to 2019. So we had an agreement because of the hazards of our trade, they were following the agreement till 2019 and that stopped. Uh, I hopefully am gonna meet with the commissioner Hopefully within the next couple of weeks, 
I'm trying to get that done. And when I do, I am going to immediately correspond with the board. Uh, if, if they, you know, won't agree to, to us seeing the applications and reviewing them, at least a couple board members, we've asked to review it with DCP and DOL to make sure that uh, everyone's okay here. Uh, so any comments on their letter that, that they sent us from the board members? I have a, a quick comment, uh, Mr. Uh, Chair. Um, could you send that agreement? I don't know, I'm not familiar with any signed agreement that was in effect prior to 2019. Um, not something I'm familiar with, but if you have a copy of that, could you please send it um, to myself and um, Karen, as well as uh, Ryan Burns? Yeah, it was not a signed agreement. It was an agreement. Okay. And, me, and Paul Farnsworth and I went in and talked to the commissioner at the time and brought, you know, the accidents and deaths that happened all around us. Um, and it was not signed agreement. And that's what we're being told now. But the proof of it is 2016 to 19, we were seeing applications that did not meet this criteria. It's plain and simple. But I can get a copy to you. Can I go through uh, Karen and then she can send it to you? Yes. Yep. So, uh, and then the board asked, now listen, you know, we had some applicants that we were skeptical about and we reviewed a couple and we don't think that the board would have approved that. Uh, a couple of those applications, so, some of them we would have. Uh, so the board has been asking for two of us to review applications with DCP and DOL. It's not a big deal. You simply go and meet with them or go over Zoom and review the applications, give your input. And then uh, that would be a proposed decision and the commissioner obviously has the right under that change in 16 to uh, modify or remand the decision back to the board for further review. So that's that. Uh, I, I will immediately be talking to the board. Uh, After talking to the commissioner, hopefully I will have that within a couple of weeks, that meeting. The, uh, the, my agenda is electronic here, so hold on a second. Uh, House Bill I-192. Uh, before I go into that, are, are, is the board okay with understanding what I was talking about, explaining everything? Yeah, we're good. All right. Uh, the House Bill 5192, an act concerning installers of residential vertical platform lift that's on our agenda, right? Yeah. Uh, that did not pass. Uh, that did not make it. And again, this Paul Farnsworth, probably Pete Collusion, you've seen some things that are pretty scary lately, one, one board member. And again, I think that would just to water down the requirements that uh, that are followed for many years to keep people safe, uh, finding a lot of equipment out there, talking to contractors that are not installed properly. They sneak in without a license and they install it or something of that nature. And uh, I think Thomas sent us uh, a couple of pictures of uh, some dangerous uh, lifts that were installed. So this would just mentality would just be the watering down the requirements that someone needs to install this. Uh, that's what that's what it would do when you carve out and make a you know a residential license just like the stairway chairlift. It just waters down the education that's required presently to install a type of equipment. But that's why I believe the board is um, opposed to uh, a lot of these things here. But it is just as uh, when when I took uh, those pictures that I shared with the board of, of an, uh, an, an unnamed installation um, that was done quite a while ago, and I showed it to um, management of a large accessibility company. And uh, I realized they're not mechanics, but they're, you know, part of the industry. And I showed them those pictures and they weren't quite sure what they were looking at. And the reason why they weren't quite sure what they were looking at is because they did not have any formal education on um, installation of hardware 
an application of a written code to the installation of the hardware. So when I started to point out to them how truly dangerous and reckless that installation was, um, they were horrified that uh, they didn't understand just by looking at a picture what was wrong with it. So that that was my goal and to, is to educate people in what they don't know, because you don't know what you don't know, right? Until somebody points it out. Yes, and you know, listening to you and Paul over the years, the reason why that accessibility license R5 and R6 encompasses all of them is because you just hit on something. When you're selling a product or want to sell a product, the application has to fit. And people will try to install this equipment where it does not meet code, a hazard. So the, even the knowledge of all that equipment where you could switch to a, a, a chairlift instead of a lift, right? Help me out if you want to, you know, determine, you know, that's against code. We can't do this. That's a big part of it. It's, it's actually, that's why it should be together, in my opinion, because the application is, is just as important sometimes as the installation, right, Tom, Thomas? Because you yeah. know, you're installing something that don't meet code, but you have another piece of accessibility equipment that will meet code. So uh, that, that's a, a big part of it. And not too many people see that. Uh, if right, you're right. one piece you're of equipment and you carve it out, then you're not interested in what's going to meet code or not because you have one product. Right. Very good, good point. And not too many people get that. Okay. Okay. And then their applications. Apparently, there was no new applications March 22nd to 14th. No, they were not. Nope. And then um, I'm sure. Uh, oh, I'm so sorry, Janita. Janita still here? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'm still here. I tried to get to you first because you're a busy person. Um, would you no, like to comment no, on anything? It, it's okay. I always enjoy listening uh, to the different topics from the different boards throughout their meetings. Um. For the past two month time frame from March uh, 1st, uh, 2022 to uh, April 30th, 2022, the, Depart the investigations division did not receive any new elevator complaints. It also did not close any existing elevator investigations it might have. Um, I will be running a new report on July 1st for the month of May and June. And um, that's where we're at right now. Okay, thank you so much for attending. Not a problem, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much as always. Board members know, you know what you're doing and how hard you work every day. Well, I, I thank you, sir, I appreciate it. And I wanna wish the board and everybody else that they have a very nice 4th of July, which is coming up um, next week. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, uh, so if the board members are okay or anyone have any comments before we adjourn, uh, that would be great. I think I covered everything and I play on a couple things, but um, things are getting a little normal. So I'll be quicker at it. If, when I, if I meet with the commissioner, which I believe I am, I will immediately uh, email the board members uh, on our meeting. If everyone's okay and no comments, we can go to adjournment if that's okay with everyone. Yeah, motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Bye, Karen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Thank Thank you. Paul. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I gotta do my see you.